Welcome to another session of the 100 Advices uh, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is our Hadith class. Uh, and we are studying in this class Hadiths uh, from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he gave to certain companions of his, different advices that he gave to them as to how to live their lives and how to handle the stresses of their lives. And um, if you guys are like me, you should be falling back on these hadiths. And right about now, since we're in the last 10 days of Ramadan, these hadiths, if you truly do believe in Allah and understand the meaning of these hadiths, these hadiths should serve as a source of strength for you to help you get through the trials. Because again, just because it's Ramadan, nowhere does Allah say that he will not test you. He will test you even more during the month of Ramadan and any other time of the year to see if all that self-evaluation that you've done, if all that uh, uh, self-work that you've done is really, you know, of, of if you really did it, you know, with the right intentions of pleasing Allah, of bettering yourself and not just for show. Because I'm telling you guys, I'm being tested and I'm pretty sure all of you are too, because all of us have alhamdulillah spent this ramadan growing in our iman growing in our uh belief in allah and one thing that i like about this zoom room uh and, and it's something that a lot of people can adjust to because here we interact with each other we get to support one another we get to first of all meet one another and see how we are in real life after years of just typing communicating through typing on the screen to be able to look at each other and say wow this is the person who i've been listening to uh, for the past 20 years or so and mashallah that right there makes it more uh, personable and then to be able to uplift one another and support each other like we've been doing in the zoom room so if you're like me you probably got all kind of crazy stuff going on in your personal life right now because we have become closer to Allah and we become closer to each other we've become bricks in a building supporting each other helping each other shaitan doesn't like that shaitan doesn't like to see uh first of all muslims develop their straight strength and faith in allah and he definitely doesn't like to see muslims come together to support and help each other remember when islam spread throughout arabia shaitan got angry he said, I would do everything I can to cause them to hate one another. I would do everything to cause them to fight and, 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 and turn against each other. And that's what he did. Right after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, you know, Shaitan played a great role in causing the companions to turn and fight and hate each other. You know, and he's been doing it ever since. Whenever he sees a community come together, you know, for the common good and work together in a nice way, he tries to cause conflict. You know, my website is no different. Shait every time we get personal with each other, Shaitan comes and tries to cause conflict, just like he did the Prophet and Companions, just like he does the Masjids. Well, we're no different, but Alhamdulillah, we're holding firm and we're holding tight all together onto that rope of Islam so Shaitan can just go bounce. He can bounce. And because we're kicking Shaitan to the curve at this website, you're probably being tested with your families, with your children, with your jobs, because Allah likes to see the growth that we've made, you know, as a community here, you know, so he's going to send trials to us through the, through our families and things that, and people that we love to see if we truly have benefited from his lectures, his teachings here. Okay, so that's why we're all being tried, including myself, but Alhamdulillah, I'm proud of myself because I'm handling myself very well. Alhamdulillah, and I'm pretty sure you guys are handling yourselves well too. The people I talk to on the phone, I'm very proud of all of you for handling your trials. 
you know. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, let's look at today's advice from our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me put it up on the screen. Despite the trials, life goes on, the classes go on. And this is another advice uh, told to us by Abu Hurairah. And for those of you who don't know who Abu Hurairah is, let me give you a little background on him. Because as you can see, most of these uh, advices and hadiths are narrated by him. Abu Hurairah was a young boy who grew up in the presence of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet made dua for him and his mother. First of all, that thing that we all suffer with, known as tribalism, racism, you know, and all that, it's existed since Allah created Adam and Eve. And even our companions had to deal with ridicule, racism, tribalism, nationalism, and all that nonsense. Well, the people made fun. They used to make fun of when Abu Hurair was a young boy. He was teased by his peers and his mother was talked about and teased by their peers as well, you know, because they didn't have the nice things that other people had. They couldn't speak as eloquently as other people could. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua, asking Allah to make the people and he's the only one at that, that, that I can remote, remember of the companions that the prophet made this supplication for. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made supplication asking Allah to make the people love Abu Huraira and his mother. Allah answered that supplication. The people ended up loving Abu Huraira's mother and they loved Abu Huraira until the day he died. You know, he was loved by everyone in response to that supplication. And not just that, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw so much good and so much humbleness and so much strength in Abu Huraira that he took his supplication even further. Not only did he ask Allah to make the people love Abu Huraira and his mother, but he also asked Allah to bless Abu Huraira with a great memory. Make him remember everything I say and everything I do. Let Abu Huraira be one of the ones to preserve and protect my Sunnah. And Allah answered that supplication too. And that's why most of the hadiths are narrated by him. Even after the prophet died, uh, Abu Bakr, uh, Umar, Uthman, Ali, all the other companions, even the wives of the prophet, whenever they wanted to remember or make sure that they were correct in doing something, they would call upon Abu Huraira because Abu Huraira was blessed with that memory. He never forgot anything that the prophet said. He never forgot anything that the prophet did. You know, and the people loved him because of that supplication that the prophet made for him too. So he played a great role in preserving and protecting the Sunnah of the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's why so many hadiths are narrated by him. Okay, and so let's look at this one in particular for today. Abu Huraira tells us that the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day said, Part of the perfection of a person's belief in Allah and religious behavior is that he or she leaves alone that which is of no concern to him. Now, the fitna that so many of us endure, again, I tell you all the time as a teacher and a diet, life is a fitna until you die. And even at death, it'll be a fitna because shaitan's gonna have his last chance to try to cause you to invalidate your belief in Allah. So life is a fitna, okay? There's always problems. The problems that we are facing today, individually and collectively are the same issues that humans have been dealing with since the beginning of time. And one of the big problems that we have as humans is we wanna be nosy. We can't help but stick our nose in other people's business, you know, and many of us, when we're going through problems in life, we get a, a, a thrill 
out of listening to other people deal with their problems because it makes us feel superior over them. It makes us think in our wicked hearts that, well, maybe I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Maybe my life ain't all that because look at her, look what's going on here. You know, let me get in that business. And then we concern ourselves with the, uh, the affairs of others to the point where we ignore our personal concerns. We don't want to face our personal concerns. Remember, we talked about today in the Hadith class this morning that we had that what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke as to uh, uh, the five characteristics, the five characteristics that will always set the Christians above us. And one of them is that they can handle the trials of life better than us. They bounce back from their trials better than us. As we talked about this morning, we want to hide. We don't want to accept the realities about ourselves. We find it easy as a nation to point the finger and blame other people you know, for the evil that happens to us, blame other people as to why we are the way we are, and we have a problem getting out of the past and moving forward. Well, this hadith goes hand in hand with that. You know, we rather stick our nose in other people's affairs rather than face the reality of our own and clean up our own lives. And this was a problem amongst the companions too. The hypocrites were busy during the prophet's time, just like they're busy during our times, always sowing discord, always trying to pull the Muslims apart, always trying to, to cause disunity, going around holding up banners of slander and campaigning against people because somebody hurt your feelings. The same thing that we're going to through now, today as a nation is what they went through then. And that's why the prophet stood up one day on the pulpit and said, it's got to stop. He said, all of this rancor, and this was after the conquest of Mecca, because it seems like the rancor and the disunity really intensified after the Quraysh embraced Islam. That's when the hypocrites really got angry and tried to turn the Muslims from Medina against the Muslims from Mecca. Does that sound familiar? You know, so the hypocrites planted many seeds, you know, oh, the prophet, you know, he's talking about us. He don't like y'all no more. You know, he's now selling y'all out for his family because they became Muslim or, you know, the prophet's giving them more attention than he is to y'all. He don't need y'all no more. The same rancor that's planted, I can use my website as an example because I'm giving attention to other people than, the, than my normal people. Now I'm a bad person. You know, the prophet went through the same idiotic crap. And that's when one day he just couldn't take it. He stood up in the mosque in Mecca. He said, this has to cease and desist. This is when the people tried to turn Ali against him. They had Ali believing that the prophet no longer needed him. This was when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the, the Muslims that we have to go out and fight because I just got a message that the Romans are on their way to Mecca. He said, Ali, I'm going to leave you behind. I'm going to leave you here in Mecca to oversee things. But the rest of you, Abu Sufyan, and all the rest of you who just embraced Islam, I'm taking you out there. Khalid bin Walid, all of y'all, I need y'all on the field with me. That's when the hypocrites went to Ali. Did you see that? The prophet is leaving you behind. He's showing favoritism. Does that sound familiar? He's not fair. He's unjust. He's not a fair man. All that you did for him. All the sacrifice you've done for him, you had his back. You was his number one hero in every battle. He's leaving you behind with the women and giving his attention to these, these people that just converted to Islam who we don't even know if they sincere. Look at that. He giving attention to Abu Sufyan and, and all of them. 
all the bad things that they did to us. We fought against them. They planted these seeds in Ali's head. Oh, Ali was angry. His response was just the way many of y'all's is. Yep, yep, well, I'm going to go on. But instead of doing like y'all do, y'all go on Facebook. You know, we Muslims, we use face, we use like we talked about today, we use social media in a bad way, whereas the Christians use it in a good way. We use social media as our platform. So we'll go run and post up, boycott this person. This person's an innovator. This person's a liar. This person's a cheat. This person's a racist. This person shows favoritism. We have doing that. Ali didn't do that. He went right to the prophet. He said, oh, prophet of Allah, what is your problem? And the prophet was shocked because Ali had never talked to him that way before. He looked at Ali and said, who are you talking to, young man? The prophet said, Ali said, I'm addressing you. He said, all that I've done for you, all the battles I fought, I was your number one warrior. He said, how dare you? How dare you leave me behind with the women? The prophet was shocked. His son-in-law, his right arm, then turned on him talking to him in a disrespectful way that he's never done before. Tears ran out the prophet's eyes and he took a deep breath. He looked at Ali. He said, oh, Ali, you allowed the people to get to you. You've allowed them to plant seeds in your mind against me. He said, don't you know, you foolish young man, that you are to me what Aaron was to Moses? Who else better than you could I trust to leave the city of Mecca to, to protect? He said, you foolish young man, you allow them to plant seed in your heart against me. When the prophet said that Ali was shocked, he said, oh, I'm sorry. He come running to the, I'm sorry. You were right, I'm sorry. And that's when the prophet left out and went and ordered everybody to gather together. And he said, you people have a, a, a problem. He said, that's when he said, Shaitan is angry right now because he did everything in his power to prevent the religion of Islam spreading throughout Arabia. We've accomplished that on this day. He said, but Shaitan is angry. He's just sworn to a law that he will do everything in his power to cause us to hate each other and hurt each other. He said, don't you know that those who are perfect in faith are those who keep their nose out of other people's business? He said, we need to work on concerning ourselves with ourselves and stop second guessing our leaders. Stop second guessing your prophet and just do what we tell you to do. SubhanAllah. That's the history behind this hadith. And that's why people such as myself and some of those other imams out there that are good imams that you don't hear about because like i say the the true good people ain't a concern with how many followers they got the true good people we're too busy trying to teach islam that's why i handle this website the way i do that's why i called the meeting i called a few days ago like the prophet called that meeting to squash that nonsense you guys have to stop. I'm telling you the same thing that he told the companions on that day when Ali thought he could come and disrespect him like that because the hypocrites put him up to it. 
I'm telling y'all, we have to stop all this rancor and hatred against each other. We have to stop going around crying our sad sob stories on social media to others and instead work on ourselves. There's so much that we need to improve about ourselves that you should, shouldn't have time to get caught up in all that crap. Mind your own business. Take care of you, your children, your family. Work on bettering yourself. If somebody hurts your feelings and you know, like the prophet told Ali, you know I'm your prophet. You know I would never treat you that way. If you think that somebody is being unjust to you and it's somebody of respect, make do it for them. Because maybe they know something like the prophet told his companions, I know things that you don't know. I'm doing things in a different way because you don't understand the politics behind it. Stop questioning your leaders. Stop challenging your need leaders. Get your feelings off your shoulders, people, and work on yourself. Make do for the people that you know deep down in your heart are good. If you think that those of us in authority are making mistakes, pray for us because that's what the, the fish do. That's what the flies and butterflies are doing. Remember, a law will only punish those leaders who deliberately, intentionally abuse their position. The Prophet Muhammad would never deliberately, intentionally abuse his authority. Layla Nasheba would never, ever, ever intentionally hurt anyone. If any of you truly know me, you know that I care about the people a lot. And I would never, ever, ever intentionally hurt any of one of y'all here. So if you think I did something to you bad, make do it for me. Like the prophet told them companions, make do it for me and make do it for yourself and make do it for us as a nation. Because as he also said on this day, he said, just to share with you, he said, my time is coming to an end. The only one who understood when he said that was Abu Bakr. He said, I'm not going to be here much longer. He said, but I did ask Allah one thing because Shaitan is so angry that Islam spread it. I asked Allah one thing. I said, Allah, don't destroy my people like you did the people of Noah. Don't punish them by destroying them with water or the earth or anything like that. He said, and Allah gave me, he answered my dua. He said, Allah said, the destruction of my nation will not come by the enemies. He promised me that we will never be overpowered by our enemies. But he shared with me that our destruction, our downfall will come from each other. He looked out at the companions and they say his eyes got wide. He said, you will kill and destroy each other. We will oppress and destroy each other. And the companions didn't know what he was talking about. Abu Bakr did, but the rest of them didn't. After the prophet died, and when that fitna began during the, the reign of Uthman, that's when a lot of the companions remembered. They said, this is what he was talking about. That's when people like me, centuries later, dire such as myself, dire such as Sheikh Morsi, dire such as other brothers and sisters out there who really do believe in the Sunnah and who try to preserve it. We see what's going on. We see the rancor. We see the hatred. We see the enmity on social media, the, the slogans, the, the protests, the banners against each other. 
And we know our enemies ain't the Kaffir. The Kaffir don't bother Layla Nasheba. They never have. I don't have problems from Christians and Jews. My problem's always been other Muslims. The same thing with the other diet. Our problem ain't the Kaffir. The Kaffir, believe it or not, they, are, they got respect for us. Some of them are in awe of us. It's these rankish Muslims, which shows how Allah gave Shaitan his plea too. He answered the dua of the prophet. We'll never be destroyed and overpowered by our enemies, but look at how we're being destroyed by each other today. Look on Facebook. Look at how Muslims are killing each other with their tongues, with their slander. And if you ask them what's the problem, it's always personal. It ain't that the person did anything to affect this Uma. It's always personal. He yelled at me. He didn't give me my attention. She hurt my feelings. Me, 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 me. That's all you hear Muslims doing. Me, 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 me. And because somebody did something to you because you too stupid to understand that that person maybe knew something that you did not know. Just like Ali, me, 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 me with the women. Like the prophet told him, you don't know what I know, Ali. Don't you know you're like Aaron to me? You're to me like what Aaron was to Moses. I'm leaving you back for a reason, dude. There's a bigger picture to see. We shouldn't have to explain it to you. If you truly trust us, like you say, you truly love the people of authority, like you say, we shouldn't have to explain to you why we say or why we do what we do, people. Just understand whatever we say or do is for the betterment of all involved and make do it for us. If you really think we done transgress something. and concern yourself with bettering yourself. Deal with your problems because we all got problems. I know the problems that each and every one of y'all got and some of y'all know my problems. Focus on handling your problems with dignity. Come out of your problems a survivor like the Christians say, I'm a survivor. Are you a survivor? No, you are a whiner. You were busy whining over something because my feelings got hurt. You weaklings. So again, this is a powerful, wonderful hadith for all of us to ponder the meaning of and for all of us to put to, uh, into effect for ourselves. The prophets, and I gave you the history behind it, I took this hadith even further than other Daya do. I gave you cause history, Islamic history is my thing. Genealogy, anybody that knows me, I do have one of the characteristics of the Arabic people too. I am fascinated with history. I am fascinated with poetry and I am fascinated with genealogy. It's an Arabic trait, it's just in our blood. So I made it a point to learn the history behind the Hadiths. I gave you the history behind this one, as well as the meaning behind it. And let's put it up on the screen again so you can see. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, part of the perfection of a person's Islam and behavior and religion is to leave alone that which is of no concern to you. And he said this, right after the conquest of Mecca, when all that fitna, when the companions started separating, Medina versus Mecca, and all that ignorance, that tribalism, that rancor, even Ali, they tried to pull in that. And Ali said that was one of the most darkest moments of his life because he hated the fact that he got tricked into that. He said he hated the fact that he got tricked into that rancor by the hypocrites. Okay, so now that I've explained the Hadith to you and its history, what is your intake? Let's open it up and share your 
ideas and how this hadith impacts you or can or may impact you and your personal life today? Who would like to start us off? Come on, let's not have cold feet. Let's get the reward of learning, remembering a law, especially the history of your prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during these last 10 days. Who would like to start it off? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Um, what I've seen from it um, is that sometimes, like if, you, if we can mention the post that you just mentioned, like Facebook or stuff, Sometimes people might share post that you read and then you like the wording of what was written. You post it back because you read the word and it spoke, the word spoke the truth. Like when we just limit ourselves with the word. But sometimes people will have um, hidden agendas that you yourself who's posting, you don't know what it is. And later on when you discover, you say, huh, I did not know that. I posted because I believe what was in that post. I believe in the words. I understood the words of Allah, but I did not know the um, the intention or whatever the person posted for. And stuff like that, if we don't be careful, we will hurt each other thinking that they support people or they do things when that's not the case. They just post about the word, but they don't know what is in people's heart. That's what I wanted to say, share, inshallah. Exactly. And mashallah, I'm glad you did. We talked about that uh, in our meeting here at Sunnah Followers a couple of days ago. And uh, mashallah, and that point is very much taken. Social media, like we said today, uh, Muslims use it in a horrible way. You know, the Christians, they don't use it this way to tear each other down, you know, but we use it in, and we, we're manipulative people. We know how to play. We know how to play on it. We know that I can take a verse of the Quran and post it on social media because it is a beautiful verse. And I know that anybody that checks it is going to give the uh, make the person I'm really attacking think that I'm attacking them. That's how the hypocrites play. Those are the type of games that the hypocrites play with the Prophet Muhammad all the way up until his death, especially after uh, the conquest of Mecca. And we're going to talk about that conquest of Mecca in another class after Ramadan. After that conquest of Mecca, the hypocrites, oh, they would use the companions. You know, that's why Ibn Abbas was so intelligent. When Muawiyah came to Ibn Abbas and said, guess what, Ibn Abbas? We've seen the moon here in Syria. Ramadan is, is, is has, the moon has been seen. <clears throat> Ramadan begins. Ibn Abbas knew that if he acknowledged what Muawiyah said, all the other Muslims that were waiting to see if he would join forces with Muawiyah or if he would join with um, um, uh, Ali, they would take that his sighting, it means that he's with Muawiyah. So that's why Ibn Abbas used his hikmah, his wisdom and said, uh-uh, I'm not accepting no sightings this year not for Medina, because he was the governor of Medina and he was an eminent companion. He said, if Muawiyah, if I say I support Muawiyah's sighting, the people are so stupid and simple-minded, they're gonna think that, my, that I'm giving allegiance to Muawiyah over Ali. So I'm, not, I'm gonna be neutral. <clears throat> and that's what I tell you guys, when you're on social media, you guys have to be careful, all of us, we have to be able to like remember a law the a law says he hates narrow minded people unfortunately guys this is all about bettering your relationship with a law before we go so far as to check a post to say we like it we better read between the lines we're going to have to otherwise you're viewed as supporting those people with all the rancor and all the enmity. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. This is what we were talking about. Social media is used in a bad way by us Muslims. 
It's used to our detriment. So that's why you don't see me posting anything. How often do y'all see me putting a like on somebody's stuff? I seldom do it because I don't want nobody to say Layla Nasheba is caught up in my drama and Layla uh, supports my drama. I very seldom will put a like on something because I know everybody has their hidden agenda. Everybody's going through personal problems in their lives. And rather than deal with their personal problems, it makes them feel superior to get in somebody else's business and cause rancor with that person, especially if the person's a strong sister. If it's a strong woman, you would do you want to take her down because she's got what you wish you had anyway. Remember, I told you, you can never please the people if you a good person. The people are going to hate you because they wish they were like you. If you a bad person, they're going to hate you because they fear you. So we have to be careful, you know, be careful what y'all check on Facebook. Is it even worth checking? If it is it even worth liking? Because there's so many personal agendas out there. There's so much rancor. This Ramadan is one of the best Ramadans. I'm going to say it. Y'all might think I'm crazy. It's one of the hardest Ramadans I've ever had in my life so far. It's also the best Ramadan I've had in my life so far. It's hard because I've had to deal with Fitna from day one, and I'm still dealing with it. It's good because Allah used it as a means of me seeing what I'm working with. It, Allah used this Ramadan as a means of opening my eyes, not only to what issues that I need to work on with myself, concerning my family, myself, and others, but also a law use this Ramadan to wake up my eyes since we're on the new medium here called Zoom as to who I really have and who I really don't. Who's really with me? Because in the 35 years of Dawa, none of y'all have seen how I look. The only people who know me personally is Sister Latifa. She grew up with me and she'll tell you I'm not bleaching my skin. And that was really, that was one of the questions I got from one of these people a couple of days ago. And I ignored the person yesterday. That's the fit and I deal with it. Y'all know that we had a sister in here yesterday in the Zoom room who kept private messaging me, asking me if I bleach myself because my voice is African American and she can't get over the fact that I'm not African American, I'm Arabic. So I must bleach myself. That's the type of ignorance we deal with. Well, Latifah's known me since I was 15 years old. Carmetta knows me forever too. Fresno's met me in person too. No, I don't bleach myself. This is the real Layla Nasheba, accept it. African-American and Arabic and, and all of the genealogy too. I even got Chinese in me. Hello, 0.5%. Lots of Bantu. Supana Allah, get over that ignorance, people. So there's always a hidden agenda. So y'all, I'm telling y'all as a diet and as your teacher, be careful with social media. This is something that Sheikh Morsi always says, <clears throat> be careful. That's why you don't see Sheikh Morsi and other people of knowledge like that on using Facebook and those other platforms because they're, 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 there's hidden agendas. So be careful, guys. Be careful checking or even like, unless it's a person that you're really close to. Like, I know Latifah. When Latifah puts up stuff, I know what's going on in her personal life. I know she's talking about this, that. That's something that, but these other people that you don't know nothing about, you've just dealt with on social, they will use you. They will use you to make it seem like they got a large following. The same way the hypocrites, tried to use Ali and that he's, he's not the only one. Other companions too, to try to turn on the prophet. Up until the prophet died, that's what he faced, was faced with. The fitna after the conquest of Mecca up to his death of his regular companions, those closest to him being manipulated to turn on him. SubhanAllah. Sister Isra, go ahead. Let me put the hadith back up on the screen. Let me so y'all can see it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, part of the perfection of a person's Islam is his 
ability to leave alone that which is of no concern to him. Go ahead, Sister Israel. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. MashaAllah, this hadith is um, a great advice for all of us, especially in the time that we're in. Um, we're in, like, you know, like in the last hours and the days of fitna and whatnot. And, um, you know, it reminds me of, you know, what we talked about yesterday with the kids. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu telling us the best of us are those who um, have, have the best manners and whatnot. And most of the time when, you know, us women have burning itchy ears and we want to hear about what someone has to say about someone, someone else. And we, you know, we, we like to gossip and we like to add our two cents. And most of the time I, before I answer or like say anything, I like to ask myself, you know, um, does this really concern me? Cause I like to mind the business that pays me you know, what benefit is this bringing me if I sit in this company and add my two cents? Um, if it doesn't benefit me, then it's none of my business. So I need to save my time and energy and refocus that energy and effort to something that will benefit me and something that matters to me the most. And so um, it's very important that, you know, we we check and verify information before we jump to conclusion. And we know that this is gonna happen regardless whether or not we want to protect ourselves, but it's also important that we, we do still protect ourselves from the fitna and that we're not dragged you know, in, in the hole or like wherever this person is trying to take us to. Like Aisha, um, may Allah be pleased with her, um, experience this right where the companions instead of verifying um the information were just going with it and spreading the rumor and when it comes to rumors it's only accepted by the fools right like if you're a fool then you'll accept it if you if you're not a fool then you're going to be that person who tries to stop that rumor and remind that person to fear allah and um in this day and age it's so hard to let a sister or a brother know to or like remind them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they they jump at you and say you're not my god I don't worship you um only God could judge me um so it's it's just best for me to just stay to myself and stay closer to those who remind me of Allah um I don't want to be part of your gossip group I don't want to be part of your cult so I'm just going to leave you alone if you don't want to if you're not going to benefit me in any way, why should I be in your in your company, right? So it's very essential that we take the time to think before we act. Um, we take the time to um, like ask ourselves: Is this my business? Is this my? If it's not your family, if it's not yourself that it concerns, then just move on. If you if you're afraid of you know um, advising that person on their or just they're gonna they're gonna fight you or whatever, just make dua for them. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Exactly. Alhamdulillah. And let me also read because I just I just saw it. Sister Shamika, may Allah bless you. She said that she's at work. So that's the only reason why she's not in here. She's usually in here. But she wanted me to read this. She said she takes away from this hadith to mind your own business and focus on your own faults. Exactly. Worry about what's going on in your personal life and stop worrying about what others are saying and doing as it can be harmful to you. If you spend more time focusing on yourself and less time on others, you'll be more at peace with yourself. Exactly. And Rashida said, Irish and Scots may be Welsh and English. <laughs> that's my, excuse me, that's my little cousin over there in Irish, in Ireland. That's right. We got all that in us. That Viking, 30% Irish, Scots, and English. All that is in me. That's my cousin over there keeping it real, you know, in the Viking land. Yes, exactly, guys. You know, life is too short. There's too much that we have to focus on. Let's focus on ourselves. You know, and if you are one of those people that's so sensitive, maybe that's something you need to be working on. I'm a sensitive person too. Believe it or not, not Latifa will tell you, I am probably the most sensitive person y'all ever meet. I'm probably more sensitive than Umi Barrel. I spend a lot of time crying. I put up a big shell because I have to. This is how I was trained to be. You know, this is how I was taught to be. If you're gonna be a dyer, you can never let the people see you sweat. You can never let the people see you hurt. So I have to put up this big, tough shell 
But when I turn off the cameras, turn off the mic, I'm crying like a baby on the phone with Fresno. Or I'm crying on the phone with Latifah or somebody that knows me, you know? You know, so maybe you have to work on that sensitivity. I know I work on mine. I'm working on trying not to let the problems at this website impact me. That's my biggest struggle because I got some issues ahead of me to, right now that I have to deal with and I cannot get sidetracked by what's going on at the website. You know, so if, if you're a person that takes things personal and your feelings get hurt so easily, then maybe you should work on changing that. Ask a law to make you a little bit tougher. I prayed for a law to give me a tough shell on the outside, but I never asked him to take away my sensitivity at heart. That's why I put so much into this dower because my heart is so soft and so sensitive. Okay. Sister Rashida said, rake your own radishes. That's an old Irish uh, saying to rake your own radishes. Good job, Sister Rashida. Okay, Sister Norto, go ahead. Let's put the hadith back on the screen. Share your intake with us on this wonderful hadith. Norto? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hey, um, did this, um, sorry, I just woke up. This um, hadith is um, very true because um, <clears throat> Nowadays, you know, people would do anything to take a person down just because, just because, um, you know, they think that um, you're better than them. And I realized that this is a disease within themselves. And um, the only way to um, get rid of that is to help. That person only can help themselves. Just like Allah said, to start with change, it has to ch start with you, not no, not no one else. That's why I don't associate with a lot of people, like especially people that have hurt me before, because there's just no going back to that. Because, you know, forever for me, I will forever be uncomfortable around that person. I would and I would always have my guard up because like I there's no way you're hurting me like that again, you know. And I feel like some people need to understand that everything's not about them. Like if you hurt a person, it's not your choice to make you didn't. It's not like you can't just go on like, oh, I didn't do nothing. I'm right all the time. Like we need to start thinking that we're always right and we're never wrong, you know? And with this, I remember like my high school days um, when I used to um, be bullied by the same people who, you know, claim to be the same skin tone that I am, which were the African-American people. And I still remember from this day, I will never forget like the memories and the hurt I felt. And like just thinking about it now, I still remember every day I would come from um, high school, every day I came, I would cry every day because they would like, you know, the way they, they would mock me and like they would call me ugly and they would bully me all the time. And I just, I, it's something that I will never forget. Like I still remember the people, the faces of the same people. So like the hurt, it's the, I let go of that, but like, it's just something I can never forget, you know? And that's why I'm always like defensive around people. I'm like, you don't know what I went through. So that's why everyone's like, oh my God, Naruto, you're always mean. And you're always like, you know, you're always like strong or whatever. And I'm like, but you don't know what I went through to have my guard up all the time. And I, and I'm like, I would be, a, I would be a fool to get hurt the same way or give this or give someone the same power to break me. That's why we should always be, you know, mindful also of what we post online because people you think are for you are mostly against you. Exactly. So before, and also before we say something, we should think is this going to benefit the person or hurt them? Or, you know, it's just better to just mind your business and like, shut up because not everything, um you don't know what a person you know is going through for you to even you know to make a comment about anything i'm like before you even make a comment why are you even doing it what what is the benefit for this are you just trying to be funny whatever you think of you think that it's funny but to that person they can take it as a hurt you know so it's just best to like you know mind their own or whatever exactly a lot and it seems like in this day and age well that's one of the signs of the last hour too you have to have a tough shell I'm sorry, guys. And that's why I tell you guys, raise your children to have tough shells, because if they don't have a tough shell, they're not going to be able to survive because the world is getting worse and it's going to come. The prophet said it's going to continue to get worse. You won't be able to find anybody that you'll be able to trust on this planet. 
You would have to travel across the country to find one person that you can trust to even look out and hold on to your property. So we have to have tough shells nowadays, you know, and try to teach that to your kids. Have a, a tough shell and learn to trust and depend on a law. Okay, good job. Sister Fartoon, go ahead. What's your take on this hadith, Sister Fartoon? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Um, the way I understood this hadith was that I think it's important not to waste our time and efforts in things that don't really um, matter to us or are no concern to us, whether that's lying, backbiting, or gossiping amongst other things. Um, sometimes it is hard, personally speaking for myself, you know, to fall into that trap where, you know, something's brought up like this and this person did this kind of thing. Um, so I think it's important to restrain our tongue from like excessive or useless speech um and also i think it's good to remember that we should be aware of not to waste our time and efforts on things that are no concern to us so if somebody's talking about something about somebody dead if it doesn't concern us then we shouldn't waste our time on that because it offers no benefit to us exactly and one of the things it's hard to walk away guys because again the nature of the human it's the nature of us to be attracted to gossip we like those things that are bad for us we like hearing about bad things you know like i was telling you guys you know look at my videos here this is good stuff we're doing my god these sessions are so great but we only got 20 people looking at us but if i was to put on here a lecture if i was to log, log in on facebook and have me and Fresno and all of us fighting, girl, we get a million hits. I mean, seriously, if I was to have us all arguing and, and put everybody on face, we'd have a million hits in one hour because people like to hear bad things. They don't like what's a benefit. So it's hard to train ourselves to walk away from that which is bad. Don't sit in the company of people who do evil. It's hard to walk away and not sit in that company. But that's something like Sister Fartoon was saying, it's something that we can work on, that we should be working on during these last 10 days. You know, it's bad that we're in the last 10 days of Ramadan and you look on social media and you see all this rancor going on with Muslims. What are you doing? You, this is how you were spending your last 10 days spreading gossip or 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 shooting each other down my god when you got aren't there other things more important for you your family yourself supana allah go ahead sister rashida i think sister faiza was before me i was going to save her for last because I'm oh, gonna, okay. yeah, I'm gonna have sorry, her do the out today. Okay, sorry. She knows it. She didn't knows want to be rude. <laughs> she knows well, I'm gonna have her. So since Anissa's is not here, she know I'm gonna have her do the clothes out. <laughs> okay. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum um, <laughs> sorry about that. I wasn't trying to run your show. Just no, you no, rude. baby, you never could. You wanted a good okay. ones here. Go ahead. All this right, is so a counselor speaking too, guys. Just let y'all know on social media. Listen to her. This woman has a degree in psychology and is a licensed counselor too. Go ahead. They like to hear I, from people. I can like say that. that with this part. <clears throat> um, when I think about this, you know, um, I, I have to really meditate on what comes first because it's not my mouth that it's the the listening to the to the stuff that is no of concern to me, and to to see things that are no concern to me too as well. You know, I think it, I, for me, this hadith goes even deeper. You know, if I'm watching inappropriate things, if I'm listening to inappropriate things, and then that's how, you know, children are trained is through hearing and seeing, because they are not speaking. They don't know how to speak, but then you start hearing the kids, you know, like for me, cursing is a bad habit of mine, and I'm going to admit it. And I'm asking Allah to help me this Ramadan with it. Cause then my, my daughter, four-year-old was saying some F bombs. I was like, what? And I knew that that was wrong. It's because she's learning, seeing and hearing what I'm doing and she's taking part in it. And I think that's where it comes for first is the hearing and the seeing of the things that is no concern to us and doesn't, isn't useful to us. You know, whether it be gossip, inappropriate things, um, listening to bad music, um, 
I mean, it, the list can go on and on, not just about gossip, but that's what that hadith means a lot to me is we're humans and we pick up on a lot of learned behaviors through our eyesight and through our hearing and then our mouth delivers. Exactly. See how she worded that? That's why I love to save her to the second to the last as a counselor. She can, this is what she deals with in life, counseling people on these type of issues and other issues that they shouldn't have to. You know, and like she said, we pick it up with the eyes and the ears and then the tongue responds. So we have to be careful when we talk about concerning ourselves with what only concerns us. That means don't look at what you shouldn't be watching. Don't listen to what you shouldn't hear. And then your tongue wouldn't respond. And maybe that'll they'll, there will be less of us in the hellfire. Because remember, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also said that the number one reason why most of us are going to be in hell is because of that tongue. Well, maybe you should have checked your eyes and your ears first. Good point, Sister Rashid. Okay, Sister Pfizer, go ahead and close us out with this. So I'm like, can I sleep oh, in before she closes oh, out? There's my Tiba. Go ahead, Latifa. Yeah. I'm like, um, Norto, I'm just waking up, but I've been listening. But what this Hadith kind of puts me in mind of is the safety and the health factor. You know, a lot of us are going through health issues. And if you're in someone else's business and talking about them and backbiting and saying things that are just really mean and harmful, you never know what it does to a person. That stress level can really sometimes take you over the top, you know, because this year I've gone through more stress I feel like in my life than I have in a long time, you know, and, it, and I know how it affects my health. And if somebody's talking about me and saying things, it's making me agitated, angry, making me really want to physically do things, you know, and, you know, and that's not, what a law wants for us, the actual fighting and doing those type of things. So we really have to look at how we talk to people and do things to people or get in their business. You don't know what it's doing. It could be that last little straw that, Push you know, send them over. over the edge, you know, and you don't want that, especially not for another Muslim, because you're supposed to want for them what you want for yourself. You know? Exactly. This is a good point. I mean, we all claim to be so down in the dean. All of us think that we know our dean and I'm all this. What are you, look at what you're doing. You hurting your brother or sister in Islam. Let me use this Zoom room. SubhanAllah, do you know how many lives we've saved of each other in this Zoom room since we opened up? We've had sisters in here that were going from everything through cancer and all other kind of illnesses, diabetes, but alhamdulillah, we were able to recognize that this person's not right or this ain't right, change this and you can get better. It's so easy for us to overlook the good things that a person does for us, how a person helped us, how a person saved our life, how a person caused us to put our health first, but because our feelings got hurt. All that person did is, is gone down the drain and now you're on a campaign to destroy them. But you claim to be a good Muslim. When you know that person too, you look what you're doing. It's not the fact of what you're saying about that person that could hurt them. It's the fact of the relationship. That was a relationship that that person thought was a one based on trust and love. And now you're doing what others have done. And now you, when you hear about your sister in Islam being sick in the hospital as a result of it, she had a stroke, she had a heart attack, mm -hmm. you know, how's that going to make you feel that maybe like Latifah said, you were the one that pushed her over that because not about what you're saying, because that person may know that Allah has that, that person's back, but the hurt that you've done to that person, especially when that person did good things to help you. Good, good, good point, Sister Latifa. Okay, Sister Pfizer, go ahead and uh, let me put the hadith back on the screen so anyone that just joined us can see. And Sister Pfizer, uh, this is the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, part of the perfection of a person's religion is that he can leave alone that which is of no concern to him. Go ahead, Sister Pfizer. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, yeah, I was just going to share that I feel like I've been applying this hadith to my life for a while now, um, since I've learned it from you. Um, I've learned how it can um, harm and benefit thyself, um, meaning 
when we keep our nose in that which does not concern us, it tints the heart. Um, like we've learned before, it's the nature of the human being to be attracted to that which is evil. And I feel like being concerned with that which does not concern us falls in this category. When we hear about the good situation of the people, it's the nature of the human being to be become jealous. It causes them to think the worst. Um, but I've learned that when you leave alone that which does not concern you, it um, and you keep your nose in out of that which does not affect you, it brings about a sense of peace within yourself, a feeling of contentment, a decrease in anxiety, and you have more love for yourself. It causes you to f focus more on your purpose. And once we reach that level, I, I've experienced actually, the people will actually give you more respect. So I just wanted to share that with you. MashaAllah, exactly, guys. And that's what it's all about, guys, understanding what our purpose is. Our purpose in life is not to try to take each other down, not to try to demean others, not to try to rebel against leaders. We were created to worship Allah. And we were put here on this earth to be tested to see if we truly do believe in him, like all of us claim we do. So Allah is going to subject us through trials, through tri tribulations. He's going to send tests our way. He's going to see how we respond when we're placed in certain situations. Will our reaction be to walk away if it's of no benefit or no concern to us? Or is our reaction going to be to take it personal and make it about us? It's something that we need to think about as we try to uh, wheedle our way through the life of this world you know, in hopes of having that good ending when we're in that grave. So we're going to close it out for today. And I want to thank everybody for participating uh, in this session of our Hadith class. And I apologize for uh, being a little distant today, but I have my own little issues I'm trying to deal with too. But Alhamdulillah, I'm proud of myself. I think I'm handling it like a pro. And Allah, as I'm doing this class right now, Allah is flashing all different ways of me getting out of this situation in my head. So I know what I'm gonna do when I get off from here. I'm gonna get busy taking care of my business like I need to. And I wanna remind everybody, don't forget that tomorrow is Tuesday and we have the Fika of prayer that the fic of prayer class with my brother Issa and please make sure that your children are here as well we need to learn the uh, how to pray properly because that's what it's about fulfilling our obligations to a law you know the correct way okay so make sure you're here for that class and we have this class and my other class too I hope Allah accepts all of our supplications remember wake up before Fajr wake up before Fajr Wake up before Fajr and make your supplications because Allah will answer it. This is your chance to become a stronger person, a better person, to get the things you need out of life for yourself, for your family. Put aside that negativity of social media and focus on yourself and your family and changing the condition of it, making you and your relationship with your husband better, giving your children a better life, a better outlook on life and bringing them closer to a law. Focus on that. Okay, so we'll stop right here. Uh, for those of you listening on Facebook, the Zoom room is open and I'll be here because I do have to work on some videos and some more things. So I may, I'm gonna be here on the computer. You, if you don't see me with my video camera, just call my name. If you have any questions, I'll answer them for you. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu anla ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ila.